So in this video, we are going to discuss the concept of reliability as it pertains to VLSI systems. And reliability is a huge field of study that uh, extends to all branches of engineering as well as to uh, other branches of science. Um, if, in fact, reliability affects any kind of system, including uh, biological systems. So uh, the introduction we're giving here is really shallow and it's really brief and it only pertains to VSI systems. And even then, it's still a very simple introduction. So reliability just considers the question of once a system has been introduced, in this case, a microchip, once a microchip has been released and is in the market, will this microchip continue to work properly or will it fail over time? If the, if the microchip fails over time, we call this a reliability issue. So reliability is kind of tightly related to testing and we'll see how, but it is also distinct from testing because it is something that becomes apparent over a long period of time when the system is used under certain circumstances. The reason reliability is related to testing is that um, the issues that can cause reliability uh, that can cause failures of the system are issues that can sometimes be uncovered by testing. Uh, yes, it's true that uh, a lot of failures happen when the system is stressed, but you can also do something called stress testing, where you expose the, the chip to working conditions that are more strenuous than normal working conditions in, in order to accelerate the kinds of issues that will cause systems to fail in the market. Now, the way we characterize reliability is usually through something called failure rate. And failure rate is the number of, number of failures that occur over uh, a period of time. So it's measured uh, per unit time because it is a rate, right? And it is given the symbol lambda, and it is measured again in terms of the number of failures per unit time. For a practical uh, VLSI system to be commercially uh, viable, we have to have failure rates that are actually kind of small. So for any kind of viable system, we have to have failures in the few failures per year, for example. And for high reliability systems, you could have a few failures per decade or a few failures per century. So this graph with the tub-like um, shape is a very well-known graph in terms of uh, reliability. And it shows the phases of a system or a chip or a component when it's int introduced to market. So in this case, think of it as the shape of the failure rate of a chip that we release to market. We designed the microchip and we have released it. And this is how the failure rate of this system changes over time. And so that's interesting because it seems to suggest that the failure rate is not a constant. It's actually something that varies over time. And so the zero of the time axis here in, uh, kind of indicates when the chip was introduced to market, when it was first released, and then the time axis indicates uh, time after release, which is usually measured in years rather than uh, days, or at least in month. So what we have here is we have three phases of uh, at least three phases of, uh, uh, of of the lifetime of the product. The first phase is called the infant mortality phase. The second phase is called the useful life phase. And the last phase is called the uh, wear out phase. The wear out phase is sometimes divided into an early wear out phase and a late wear out phase. So what we can see here is that once the uh, component or system is first introduced, it has a high failure rate. As that component uh, keeps getting used in the market, the failure rate starts to decrease. This is called the infant mortality stage. And in the infant mortality stage, we have introduced a very large number of components into the market. Millions of chips have been released and a very large number of chips start to, relatively large number of chips start to fail initially, but then the rate at which they fail starts to decrease with time. And the reason for this is that early on, bad chips, chips that had faults that we missed, or that had faults that would only be uncovered with use, will start to die in large numbers. As these chips are weeded out, as they, are, as they get weeded out of the population, 
the uh, rate at which uh, chips start to fail uh, continues to decrease. Eventually, we will reach a certain failure rate and uh, the failure rate starts to kind of saturate at this certain rate. This indicates the useful life period of the product. In the useful life period of the product, we have a constant failure rate. So the manufacturer kind of has um, an idea of how uh, often their systems fail, and they can develop a commercial model that allows them to replace these components, and everything is, is settled and um, stable. Uh, at the end of useful life, the products that are in the market start to fail because just simply they are aging. So the chips will eventually fail. They will eventually fail, maybe in a decade, maybe in a couple of decades, but they will eventually start to fail, even if they are good, because of the accumulation of issues due to reliability. This indicates the start of the wear out phase. In the early wear out phase, we start to notice that the failure rate starts to increase. And this indicates that perhaps this product is now starting to die out. In the late wear out stage, the failure rate of the products just kind of skyrockets and almost all of the product dies out of the market. This is expected and normal. This kind of behavior is expected and normal and there's nothing wrong with it. What matters is that you manage these failure rates. And the goals of a, of a, of a good product are, first of all, to bring the start of useful life earlier and to push the start of wear out later. So basically increase the period of time in which the product is in useful life. And also to bring down this value of failure rate for useful life. So basically we just want to increase the amount of time in which the product is in useful life and to push down the failure rate during, uh, during useful life. There's really no need to try to manage failure rates during wear out because products are going to fail anyway during wear out. And so, you know, it's a futile effort to try to minimize failures in this phase. It's also not very useful to try to manage failures in, in, in infant mortality, because even if the product is really good, even if the chip is very well designed, there are issues that will always be there and will always be uncovered only when the product is introduced. We also, when we looked at testing, we also discovered that um, even with a very high yield and high coverage uh, process, there will still be a defect level in chips that get shipped to market. And we depend on the infant mortality stage to just weed out these products. Uh, what really matters is that it weeds them out quickly. So what you, you want to happen is for the onset of useful life to become earlier rather than the management of failures during the infant mortality stage.